Hello everyone, this is Saeed from CarTechTalk.com. We're in a 2013 Chrysler Town & Country minivan. We're here to check out the Uconnect system, so let's get to it. What you're looking at here is the Uconnect 430 system with a 6.5 inch touchscreen display. You have four hard buttons on each side, as well as a dedicated volume knob. Over on the right hand side, there's a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack a USB port behind this plate. There's a second USB port in the glove box. Internally, it has a 30 gig hard drives, which 28 gigs are user accessible. There's a CD slash DVD player behind this screen, and it does play DVD videos while in park. You also have a rear screen for the second and third row passengers, Bluetooth for both audio and phone. There are redundant steering wheel controls as well as a backup camera. Going back to that 6.5 inch color touchscreen, I have to say it's bright enough but at the same time I wouldn't call it super bright. The colors are designed for high contrast which you could see dark background with white lettering. This adds to it being easy to read. It's just too bad the pixel resolution is not that great. Although Chrysler does call it a high-res screen so don't get me wrong it's still perfectly readable it's just not as good as some of the other guys in the business even sitting in the driver's seat you can see the pixelations on the letters and on horizontal lines it's fairly accurate for responding to my touch as well as you as you could see when I jump between the different menus it does respond although there is a lag in the screen refreshing or redrawing the needed information. When it comes to the layout of both the on-screen buttons as well as the hard buttons, there is room for improvement. You can understand everything that the screen is telling you, but it takes a few seconds to absorb exactly what's happening and to figure out what button you want to push to complete the action you're trying to do. Overall, it, it just looks a little cluttered to me. It doesn't look, it doesn't have that clean look that I would, that I would really like. Let's jump to something a little bit more interesting on this radio, the USB drive. By pressing this media button, you'll be presented with a screen that gives you access to the internal hard drive, the CD or DVD currently loaded in the radio, or the auxiliary, the auxiliary ports. This includes a 3.5 millimeter aux jack, or either of the USB ports or even Bluetooth audio which we'll get to in a minute so it'll start playing whatever you have plugged in to the radio in this case we have here our Android smartphone it's set up in on USB drive mode it takes a while for the radio to read through all the files on the smartphone and read all the metadata on the mp3s when it does that it'll present you with a full list of songs and by pressing this search button you can access the audio by artists genres albums and so on nothing super fancy there but i do like the fact you can jump to specific alphabet areas so let's say we want an artist and let's say we want Taylor Swift. So if you press the A to Z button, you can jump right to the T's. Press go. Now you're in the T's. You will have to scroll down to find the artist you want, Taylor Swift. It'll start listing her albums or just play all of all of the Taylor Swift songs. Press the info button you get the basic mp3 metadata no album art though shows up but at least you do get the metadata the annoying thing about this process is if you don't have the metadata loaded on your audio files then everything comes in as unknown unknown artist unknown album and so on one of the annoying features of this radio are the two USB ports do not function the same way. The USB port in the glove box will 
read all metadata off the USB device, like I showed you where you can search for album, artist, and so on. However, the USB port here does not. This is more for plugging in a USB flash drive or a smartphone that can be used in USB drive mode, but it gives you access to folders and not metadata. So let's take our same Android smartphone, plug it into the radio. The radio will read the data. However, I did say the radio is slow in reading in reading data. So there we go. It actually it starts playing the phone. Now notice I don't have the search button down here. What I have is a folder button. So I can go up through the folder structures. I can look at the folder structure on my device and I can select select specific folders. Now I've put things into different folders so I can select rock and then after reading the files in that folder it'll start displaying what's in there but you notice it still hasn't again reading files on the devices are very slow okay so the radio has read the files on the device and it's showing you what I have available now I can't search so if I wanted to find something lower on the list besides A's I have to keep pressing the down arrow and scrolling through this can be pretty tedious so I can't jump to the S's or the Q's or anything like that it's it's kind of annoying if I go back up one menu and back into there it starts from the top again now I have to scroll all the way down to actually get to what I want to listen and now I can finally get to let's say Lincoln Park after going through many screens a very important thing to note is when playing media through the USB flash drive digital media you will not get what I would consider good sound quality the digital to analog conversion in the radio is not really up to high standards it almost sounds like it's running the mp3 at a lower bit rate than it really should be running at one of the annoying things I have found with this radio is you cannot have two devices plugged into the USB ports both at the same time and have the radio recognize both devices for instance as I mentioned we currently have an Android smartphone plugged in to the Glovebox USB. Here we have an iPod Touch. If we plug this in, it does start charging, so the iPod recognizes that it's plugged in. The radio does provide adequate power to charge an iPod Touch. If you press Devices, you will see all devices that you can possibly have under the auxiliary heading again such as the 3.5 millimeter port or the USBs or the Bluetooth we do have the Android phone Evo the that's paired on Bluetooth the USB version of the phone that's plugged into the port but it does not recognize the iPod to get it to recognize we actually have to unplug the other USB device. So let's try out a couple of Bluetooth voice commands. Ready. Dial 1-800-555-1234. Calling 1-800-555-1234. Is this correct? Cancel. Ready. I didn't want to actually dial that obviously I just made that number up but you get the point when after you pair the device it will ask you if you want to download your phone book if you said yes you can directly dial anybody in your phone book by saying that name since we are talking about voice commands let's try out some voice commands with a phone or USB flash drive or iPod so 
I have an, an iPod currently plugged in. Now to access the voice, the voice recognition, use this button up here, what I call the bad breath guy. So hit that, play artist, the Beach Boys. It acknowledged. Now, it takes a while for it to actually come up. Now it started playing finally. That is one of the good and bad points. I found usually the system is pretty good at recognizing my voice. However, there is a delay in it interpreting what I'm saying to an actual command on the radio. In addition to when I get it right of the command, and it executes it, it doesn't give me a confirmation right away that says, I'm going to do what you asked. It waits and the system sits there and you're not sure what it's actually doing. It just goes on and waiting until it, until it starts to play. Then you know it actually worked. Earlier I mentioned the 30 gig internal hard drive. To access the files on the hard drive, you press the media button and you can get to the hard drive. Any files that are on there will start playing. The normal skip, pause, and so on still works. Or you can access your files by pressing the My Files button. Now, My Music, this is where you can add or delete music, things like that. So to add music from either the CD or a USB flash drive or phone plugged into the USB port, click Add Music Files. You can say Disk or Front USB. To say Disk gives you a, a complete CD ripping option. It does not let you choose one track, two, or anything like that. It gives you full CD ripping, and then you have to go back and actually delete the files you don't want. Or if you select the front USB, notice front USB, if you have a device plugged into the USB in the glove box, you're out of luck. It will not take anything from that USB drive, only this USB drive. Select that. It reads what's on your drive. Now, I've already came in here once before. If it's the first time you're coming into this part, this part it will take you a few minutes to read everything on your USB flash drive. You'll scroll down to the folder you want and select the folder and then you can select individual songs that you want to copy or select the whole folder. If I say I'm just going to choose a Carrie Underwood song, select that one, save. Down here it shows you percentage, 100%. It's completed copying the one file on the hard drive. I go over and this would be the song, but it doesn't actually have the information. Another feature that I really do like is the My Pictures. You can add pictures to the radio either from the CD slash DVD drive or again from the front USB port. So this will only take JPEGs that are on your USB flash drive or CD. So it, it starts reading what you have on there, creating a thumbnail image. You can select a picture and then you can set it as one of the background images. Now it's not a complete wallpaper background image. It's a windowed image. I'll show you what I mean. I just jumped over to radio by hitting the info button. It brings up that image. That's all you get. You don't get a full screen picture. You don't necessarily get a slideshow. You get some pictures. You would be able to later on access your pictures in this in this screen and and go through them if you wanted to. It's cool, but I personally don't know how useful it is. 
One of the last things I want to show you in the video review is the backup camera. If we turn the vehicle on, okay, we put the vehicle into reverse, there's the backup camera. So it does have lines on there that shows you distance of how close you are to the next object. However, it these lines are not trajectory lines. So even if you turn the steering wheel, they will not turn. They will always stay straight. The camera quality is poor, but it gives you the idea of what's behind you. It does work well even at nighttime when it's dark, so I will have to give it that as a plus. That was our review of the 2013 Chrysler Town & Country Uconnect system. However, if you go to the website, read through the posting, we do have more detail on things that I was not able to cover here. But for now, this is Saeed from cartechtalk.com signing off. Enjoy the ride.